Hi guys, it's Violet. I'm so sorry this video is so late. I got sick and I was like, oh, I'll just record it later this week. Well, that week was the concert and it's just, if you've been in concert and I had an exam the day of the concert, if you've been through anything similar to that, you know how terrible it is. I'm slightly better, not the best, but I gotta get this out. So let's get on with the video. In His Shadow by Mina Kinney. Chapter 15, Pansy vs. Ginny and the Epic Battle. Jacob's point of view. I was sitting in the DADA classroom, waiting next to Neville. He was holding a moving picture in his hand, looking at it dreamily. It looked as if it was a picture of him and his mate, but I did not want to ask him about it. Hey Malfoy, you're not a man enough to make your Omega Neal, or does it hurt his ugly feet? Red hair, clothes produced ages ago. You could guess who decided to be especially bitchy today. Ginny Weasley. She's the second alpha her parents had after her brother Bill, making her think she was something superior to her Omega brother Charlie and her four beta brothers, Fred, Ron, and Percy. I'd even spare her a look. Weasley, unlike you... I was man enough to claim an Omega. Seems that like even Omegas are more powerful than your pitiful self. I retorted, pulling Neville over by his neck and presenting the new collar as made it sent him. It was made out of a thin but robust material and an elegant black with a tag spelling My Bunny. As planned, Ginger got angry and stepped away from us. All of the blinds were closed suddenly when Snape entered the room. Open to page 294 and five points each Gryffindor who made the Omega Neal. Again, Ginny gave me an evil look and I was put in a satisfying look. We had the lesson on banshees like Ginny and I noticed how much Neville was writing down. Simultaneously, my inner competitor ended up making me take even more notes than him. I think this friendship might help me with my grades. Mr. Malfoy, could you repeat what I said? It seems some people don't find the need to listen to this lesson, as it is only important for their newts. I nodded my head and repeated that banshees have been spotted in the last year. When the lesson ended, I grabbed mine and Neville's bag, as it was always better to do a bit of a workout than none. While I let Neville go talk to the other, while I let Neville go talk to other Omegas, that she was in the same lesson too. I was talking to Pansy when I felt a tug on my uniform. Draco, could we take Luna with us? He whispered, and I nodded. Of course, we could take someone with us. I wasn't some asshole to let the poor girl stand here, unable to walk through the corridors alone. Well, Pansy, many of these aspects. Pans, are you listening? I asked her, while well, she seemed to be looking behind me, not reacting to the hand I was waving in front of her face. Shut up, Jaco. She told me, her voice slipping into her alpha voice. Oh, someone saw a potential mate. Who? I asked, quickly looking around. Small, or even called cute as fuck. Don't tell me you can't see. W wait a second. She pushed me out of the way and strolled through the room. Me behind her. There was Ginny, pressing a blonde girl with big, silver, innocent eyes against the wall. I told you what you have to do. I'm an alpha. You follow my orders. Now fucking stay close to me. Don't talk to anyone besides me. Well, wow. I guess she wanted to prove to me that she could also get an Omega Poor Girl. I mean the one pressed against the wall, not the red-headed disaster. Pantia came to a halt in front of the two. Weasley, let her go. She ordered, spitting in her face. You can't tell me what to do, and I claim who I please. Fine. Fight out one of the Forbidden f Lake. The winner takes her. Agree or lose her. Pansy proposed, and the two of them shook hands, leaving just enough space for the poor Omega to flee. She ran over to Neville, who had to hold himself back from hugging her. 
I pulled the two behind me to transfiguration. Neither Pansy nor Jenny was in this class, letting the blonde calm down. But she was still fidgeting and couldn't sit still, making McGonagall take five points from her house. At lunch, we had to split. But not before she and Neville had a talk, and I informed Professor Snape of the upcoming fight, so he could step in if the two tried to kill each other. Neville, being the smart boy he was, was already waiting under the table for me, so we would not have to make a big scene today. Draco, is it true that Pansy challenged Weaslet? Blaze asked, feeding Vince like a baby. I nodded my head, letting a sausage fall down for Neville. What do you think? Will we have to bring Ginny to the infirmary in a paper bag or extremity by extremity? <laughs> a coffin should suffice, I told him. We stopped when Pansy sat down next to us, glaring at the Gryffindor table and taking peeks at a certain Omega. Either she's going to die today, or I will make sure to shove her face into her ass so deep enough that nobody will ever see her again. She grumbled, stabbing her steak. As planned, I brought Neville and his friend to the Black Lake after lunch, and Snape and I mocked the battleground for the two. By now, many people had gathered to see the fight, as it was rather uncommon today for Alphas to actually fight. Normally, money decided this matter. At 1 p.m. on the dot, Pansy entered the battleground, wearing black leggings and a thick but flexible green shirt. She had pearled her hair back, then Jenny appeared. She was still in her school uniform, as if she had not cared to prepare for this fight. Snape had pulled the prize next to him, while the two fighters took the positions, ready to attack. Pansy gave Jenny a venomous look, and her opponent spit on the ground. Jenny attacked. She threw the first hex at Pansy, making the rest of us laugh. Weaslet, magic is not allowed in such battle. You won't be allowed to move for the next Three seconds, Snape declared, putting a short body binding spell on her, and Pansy could do with her as she pleased. She pulled the frozen body of the redhead on the ground, pushing her face into the mud, and then when Ginny could move again, she pulled her arms on her back, twisting them around until she was in too much pain for her, and she had to give up, sobbing and covered in dirt. She moves slowly back to her friend, the group, calling the fight unfair. I declare Pansy Parkinson the winner of this fight, and she is the one to get Luna Lovegood as her Omega, Snape said, pushing the blonde gently over to Pansy, who promptly picked her up, carrying her back to the school. Scared that Pansy might hurt the Omega, Nevin and I ran behind them, following them into the dungeons. When Neville and I arrived in the Slytherin common room, Lina was on Pansy's lap, cleaning off the dirt from Pansy's face with a wet cloth. She was being extremely careful while looking at her alpha's face. Her face was slightly agape. You really don't have to. Pansy tried to argue, pushing the curls behind Luna's ear. Made us dirty. Need to clean her up. The younger mumbled. I gave Neville a confused look. Her mind is different from ours. She has other ways of thinking, and Ravenclaw doesn't like people who think differently. She's been questioning the rules about Alphas and Omegas, and they only first heard her repeat each rule over and over again, pressing them into her brain. He explained with such a sad expression, the poor girl. Hopefully, our mama bit would be able to help her. By the look they were giving each other, Luna would be mocked by Tamara, shown off by Pansy to no end. And Ginny will face the fate of a defeated enemy, fearing the wrath of Slytherin. I guess I can start planning her funeral. I look at the two lovebirds. I was overcome with a desire to hold my soon-to-be maid in my arms and cuddle him, show him my love. End of chapter 15